Thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to check out the calendar interface that came with FileMaker 19. It's a drag and drop add-on, and we're going to look at the features that came with it and how to configure it. Welcome to Productive Computing. I'm Paul Fisher. Be it Google Calendar or Microsoft Outlook or Apple iCal, our users use calendars every day. And therefore, they have an expectation for how a calendar is supposed to operate. And unfortunately, anything less is a compromise. Now, in the past in FileMaker, we've done things like create a complex grid of portals to make a month view. But now with FileMaker 19, we have a drag and drop add-on that gives us the calendar our users expect quickly and efficiently. Now, this is how it looks when you first bring it in. It does not come with the holidays. I imported those for the sake of having some data. Do note, this is editable, which means at this point I could move it around and that would be on the wrong day. But if I were to turn editable off, I could not move it. I have a week mode and I have a day mode. And if I click down here, it allows me to create an event. I'll make date one and we'll say close. And if I click on it, I can stretch it. I can also move it. I can overlap. So if this one comes into that one, they will accommodate it. I can change its color. Which you could set that up where certain calendars or certain colors. In the week mode, we see it works as expected. If I click on a date and I make it all day, it will jump up into the all day area. So I can click the plus sign to create a new event. We'll call this my vacation. And we see it spans the entire week. And then if I wanted to move it down a few days, I could simply drag it to the right and it'll wrap. When you click the configurator button, you see that the events display layout is already selected. Fields will only show if they are on this layout. So let's go look at that layout quite quickly. This is the layout that shows when we click on detail. Now you could modify this to do all sorts of things. So you have lots of flexibility. If we go back to main and we click on our configurator, you'll see that everything is matched up. We look at our optional fields. This is the only one that didn't come configured. Let's just set that up to our description. We can see what that will do. We see that our alt text is now displayed nicely. This could be really handy for using a calc field to combine a bunch of different information for a really quick view. Additionally, in our configurator, if we go to filter settings, we can choose a field. Now this field is showing up because I've put it on the layout right here. This is a global field that's located in the calendar add-on table. And then we're gonna pick the field that we're gonna search. So we'll just search the title. I'm gonna do a really quick import and bring in some records for you. And notice that our event record is quite simple. And this is what I wanted to show you. It will vertically stretch to accommodate all of the events. This was just simply, we couldn't, we couldn't do this with the portals. Also, if I grab the right side and stretch it, it's anchored to my right edge and my calendar will stretch accordingly. You'll see that it can handle lots of stacked events very easily. And these calendars will render quite quickly for remote workers as well. So I took our busy, very busy day and I imported it to each day of the month of September. So this calendar is displaying around 690 events. We go into week mode, we can watch this render. Just to get a sense for how fast it is. If we go into our configurator and our other settings, Notice we, with a single click, we can convert this calendar to start on a Monday. Additionally, we can say we want it to start as a day and we could choose our default color. I've created an empty file here called calendar demo and I click in here and I go into layout mode and I may need to open up my tab on the left side. And if that comes in on a different tab, just click add on, hit the plus sign, and then we see our add on and we select calendar. We get a preview over here 
It's telling us what tables, layouts, and scripts it's going to install. Notice our table names. Um, they're FC Calendar. That's probably not going to conflict with any of our existing ones, but if it would, we should rename our tables to not have conflicts. Now, at this point, it has modified our database. If we look at our tables, we see that it's added the calendar table and it's added one for some sample data. It also added a bunch of scripts and some custom functions. Now we drag this on. At this point, we've created an instance and we can do this multiple times on different layouts. And it's identified by this add-on UUID. So now you've probably got this installed and you've been configuring the sample data. And I want to give you one strong tip. Don't use the sample data table in a final solution. Either copy it or throw it out altogether. And the reason for that is the current upgrade path is to uninstall the add-on and install a new one. And that data, that sample table will be removed when you uninstall the add-on. A big takeaway with the JavaScript add-ons is that they are all instances, so they all have an ID. And anytime you communicate with the web viewer, you have to pass along the ID of that instance. In order to get the same functionality you saw me use, you'll need to create this button. And it's simply calling the calendar refresh script step, and it's passing the UUID of this instance as the script parameter. Now you can get that value from right here. It's also located in the configurator button. And this is another way that it will pass. So it either passes it as just the UUID, or as a JSON object, or as a more complex JSON object for other scripts. You don't have to completely understand all this. You just have to copy and paste the right script parameter from the right button. And you can get that by exploring what the existing buttons do. It's also important to know that while this comes in as a grouped object, it doesn't have to stay that way. In fact, if you wanted to, you could take this configurator, you could cut it and paste it elsewhere, it would work perfectly fine. In fact, the configurator button does not need to be on this layout at all. Thanks a lot for joining me. I hope this answered some of your questions about the capabilities of the calendar add-on in FileMaker 19. Remember that likes help us know we're producing the content you find valuable. And feel free to leave a comment if you use this calendar or you find things that the rest of us could benefit from. Additionally, we have a playlist of the JavaScript add-ons. Feel free to check that out. And in that playlist is a video about the fundamentals of using JavaScript add-ons in your solution. And I highly recommend you check that out. There's a few things in there that'll be good to know down the road and they'll make your life a lot easier. So thanks for joining.